Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Here you are going to see the electronic spectra for two identical electrons and you are going to see several terms which are written over here and these are necessary to know to define the electronic spectra for a given molecule. So here in this video I am going to elaborate the molecular term symbols for given molecule and you are quite aware about the term molecular term symbols as we have already discussed about the atomic term symbols in a very much detailed way and I have already uploaded all those videos on the channel. To understand this, we are having a comparative overview about the atomic and molecular term symbols also. But before moving further, I am just going to explain before this video I have already discussed about the molecular orbital diagram for homoatomic molecules. So here homoatomic means the molecules having same type of atoms. And here these columns represents the different molecules. I am going to show you here. So these are the different molecules for which I have shown these columns. And these horizontal lines show the different molecular orbitals for a given molecule. So here I am showing you here and you all are aware about the terms which I have defined in detailed manner in my previous video. Here is the sigma orbital which is formed by the combination of 2s orbital. Similarly here you are having the pi orbitals which are formed by the combination of p orbitals and this equal sign suggests that these two molecular orbitals are degenerated and this is the sigma orbital which is formed by the combination of p orbitals and the star wherever I have written this it means these are the antibonding molecular orbitals and uh, here you can see up to nitrogen mixing of 2s and 2p orbitals takes place whereas after nitrogen this mixing will not takes place so that we are having the sigma orbital for this oxygen and fluorine downside downside as compared to the pi orbital. So you can see here I have shown that this is changing its of sigma and pi orbitals and you can see the color scheme which is inverted from lithium to fluorine. Now the question comes why you are elaborating this molecular orbital diagram here if we are talking about the molecular term symbols, you are very right actually. I am showing you these molecular orbital diagrams so that I can suggest you that uh, these are the electronic configurations from these molecular orbital diagrams which we obtain and uh, we are filling the electrons and if we are filling the electrons we know how we are going to fill the electrons and what will be the electronic configuration only then we can write down the molecular term symbols for a given molecule. One more thing which I bring to your notice from this electronic configuration we cannot define the electronic spectra because that is very tedious. So this is why it is important to know the molecular term symbols and to designate the molecular term symbols for a given molecule. So here is the molecular term symbol how it is written and uh, I will explain all such terms. Now I will first compare this molecular term symbol with the atomic term symbol and I will elaborate all such terms one by one there and then I will explain the physical significance of these terms. So here is the comparison of atomic and molecular term symbols. So this is L and here this is termed as total orbital angular momentum for in case of atom here you can see this is the atom and this is the molecule right so this 2s plus 1 here s is the total spin angular momentum and the term 2s plus 1 collectively is termed as multiplicity now this j this j is represents as total angular momentum and it is come from the spin orbit coupling right so this is the atomic term symbol which we have already discussed in my previous video. Now coming to the molecular term symbol. So here in this case molecular term symbol this is uppercase lambda this is uppercase omega so this upper modulus of uppercase lambda and this gives us the absolute value means if it is negative 2 then we will get positive value. 
right so this is the total electronic orbital angular momentum along internuclear axis so i hope this term is little difficult for you to understand so i will explain it in detail in my next slide right here sometimes we use s and sometimes we use sigma though it is written as sigma but because of the confusion of the if our lambda is equal to having zero or capital lambda is having zero then we designate this term as sigma so there is a confusion actually so just to avoid this confusion sometimes we used to write 2s plus 1 and sometimes we used to write 2 sigma plus 1 right so there is no difference at all so this sigma is the total spin angular momentum about this internuclear axis which i skipped here in writing and this is the uppercase omega this uppercase omega means the total electronic angular momentum along internuclear axis again right so these are the meaning of these term symbols and their comparison with the atomic term symbol with the molecular term symbol you can see here right now i am going to explain the orbital angular momentum first then i will elaborate the spin angular momentum and after that i will explain this omega or total electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis the one question which comes to my mind is why we are talking about internuclear axis why we are not simply talking about the total orbital angular momentum as we did here in case of atomic term symbols why we are again and again writing along with internuclear axis so i am going to explain this an answer of these questions right so now i am going to explain this total orbital angular momentum along internuclear axis these two are the nuclei and here is the internuclear axis now coming to the next if these two nuclei are of same atoms say hydrogen and hydrogen then this is called homodiatomic molecule and if this is the case then sharing of electrons are ideally set in between the in nuclei on this internuclear axis and if this happens so then we are having orbital angular momentum for the electron so if we consider h2 plus case then we are having this orbital angular momentum just to avoid the complication we are just simply taking an example of one electron molecule so here is the orbital angular momentum for this and here is the spin angular momentum for the electron and these orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum having their projections along this internuclear axis and which is termed as here it is lambda so this is the total electronic orbital angular momentum along this internuclear axis and this is the component of this s and this is termed as total electronic spin angular momentum about the internuclear axis and these are designated by the uppercase lambda and sigma if we combine these two say spin orbit coupling spin orbit coupling orbital coupling so then in that case we are getting uppercase omega as the sum of these two from this to this place and these this is known as total electronic angular momentum about this internuclear axis this is very difficult for me to understand how these vectors come into the picture right so just to understand these electronic and orbital angular momentum i will again show you the comparative structure with the atomic orbital and spin angular momentum say this is the electronic this is the orbital angular momentum for the electron one electron system that is why these are represented in smalls right and this is at the same time is spinning on its own axis then it is having orbital angular momentum and as well as spin angular momentum this orbital angular momentum is represented by this line and this spin angular momentum is represented by this line so if i draw this spin angular momentum here 
parallel you can see then i will get the sum of these two this is the s and this is the l and sum of these two i will get as g this is the total angular momentum now still if you are still confused with understanding in this then you can also write down this in this manner so here is the orbital angular momentum this l this one and this is the s spin angular momentum and on the summation of these two you will get again the g vector g this, this is the picture actually which is shown over here you can see i hope you are going to understand this picture how it is elaborated now the question comes why about the internuclear axis why not as such before this i will elaborate here in case of atoms when the applied external magnetic field is applied in the g direction right then these angular momentum starts processing about this external applied magnetic field but here in this case these nuclei are electrostatic in nature and they produce electrostatic field along this bond here i have written this in detail in most of the molecules the electrostatic field due to these nuclei is so strong that vector l presses very rapidly and loses its meaning as angular momentum means the field is so strong or strong enough to break the coupling between vector l that is orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum or we can say spin orbit coupling then this vector l couples with the internuclear axis and presses about with the quantized component so here the term comes component which is having the magnitude this lambda h cross h is the planck's constant and here this lambda is the total orbital angular momentum along this internuclear axis this lambda is having values about capital l to zero now you may also have confusion here because we have already studied about this right so don't get confused actually if i am having s orbital s orbital in case of atom then the value of l is zero and if i put that value here then i will get zero again for this lambda if i am having p then i will have this put for p is it l is equal to 1 and l minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 so i am having two values 0 and 1 so for this 0 i am having sigma and for this 1 i am having pi right and this pi is plus minus degenerated so this plus minus degeneration is here this is sigma if i am having d orbital for d i am having 2 l is equal to 2 and if l is equal to 2 then put here so 2 i will get 2 then 1 and then 0 so i will get sigma i will get pi i will get delta and these are plus minus degenerated getting my point so these two terms please do not get confused with these so this is the concept which is given over here now coming next if these atomic orbitals are moving in this manner right so here is the precession of orbital angular momentum and here i have shown i am taking this liberty to show it in my way because i have not seen this kind of pictorial representation in the textbook now we can say the coupling of the spin orbital angular momentum in a linear molecule only their components along the internuclear axis are well defined we can also say like this and for that here you can see this is for atoms and this is for molecules for atoms l is having mlh cross here lambda is having mlh cross and ml has values plus l to 0 to minus l means 2l plus 1 value but here in this case we are having as i elaborated earlier so this many values and the values which are other than 0 that are doubly degenerated right that are doubly degenerated so this is the meaning of this orbital angular momentum now how we are going to designate this orbital angular momentum to define the molecular term symbol 
I have elaborated here. So lambda is the quantum number associated with electronic orbital angular momentum component along the internuclear axis. And the value is given like this. And it is analogous to the ML value. And ML has values 2L plus 1 as I told you earlier. And uh, this lambda is plus minus or we can say doubly degenerated except this 0. These all terms I have already mentioned there in my previous slide and this lambda is having 0, 1, 2, 3 values say and so on. Then their designation as molecular states. Here I have elaborated molecular orbital. This small lambda will designate it as sigma pi delta phi in smalls because these are the molecular orbitals. Right? Why, whereas molecular states are represented in uppercase lambda. So that is the difference actually. So this sigma is the state and this is small is the molecular orbital. So don't consider over here. This one is designated as uppercase pi. This two is designated as uppercase delta and similarly pi and so on. Except this sigma all are doubly degenerated. You can see here plus minus. So we are having plus 1 and then minus 1 value here. Similarly for this delta we are having plus 2 and minus 2. Right. So these are the values for the orbital angular momentum along the internuclear axis. Now coming to the example. How, how we are going to designate this. So here I am going to take the example of the simplest molecule. So this is the hydrogen molecule and for this hydrogen molecule these are the atomic orbitals which combine together to form the molecule. And the same number of atomic orbitals combine together they will form same number of molecular orbitals. So here we are having the bonding molecular orbitals and here we are having the anti-bonding molecular orbitals now filling the electrons in the molecular orbital. So we are having two electrons so I have filled these two electrons in the bonding molecular orbital. Now, as I know, this is the sigma. This is the electronic configuration for this hydrogen molecule. Electronic configuration is this. For this molecular orbital sigma, this lambda is equal to 0. And for this lambda is equal to 0, we are designated the term sigma, right? Similarly, you can write down for nitrogen. So, nitrogen is having 14 electrons and the last electron will go to the in the pi orbitals and it is completely filled orbital. So this is designated as plus 1, this is designated as minus 1 and how many electrons are there? 4 electrons are there. Therefore on summation of lambda we will get 0. Right and therefore it is again designated as sigma. So completely filled shells will always be designated as sigma. This is the trick, right? So this is how we are going to designate our orbital angular momentum term here in this molecular term symbol. So this is one example. 